everyone and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for joining us today. So before we start the webinar, just a quick reminder of the rules. So all the attendees are mute, but you can send us all of your questions through the chat. We will answer the questions at the end of the webinar. And in case we do not have enough time to answer to all the questions, we will answer to you personally after the webinar. And as always, the presentation will, of course, be sent to you. Today's webinar. So for the agenda, we we'll today have two speakers, Claude and Lucille. Claude will present you the worldwide and European wheat market review. And Lucille will add some uh, very interesting information about the wheat flowers quality. So now let's start uh, the webinar and Claude, uh, the floor is yours. Good morning to the European attendees and good evening to our friends from uh, Eastern country, Asia, particularly Korea, Taiwan. So let's start uh, this uh, Crop 23 review. I am delighted to share this um, new market context, but uh, we could say that uh, new crop, uh, new context, but uh, we have um, to consider three main topics which are raising every year. Ray geopolitical context, weather market, and uh, global consumption. So let's start with the geopolitics uh, context. This is um, mostly driven by the Russian situation. On this graph, you can see the, the progress in terms of uh, crop in Russia. So within, I would say, 15 last year, Russia has doubled is um, it's a uh, wheat production capacity and now we are reaching almost 90 million tons of wheat so it's a huge volume and the uh, russian people are ready to export as you know and the impact on the uh, heavily on the situation the geopolitical situation especially with this uh, conflict in between uh, russia and ukraine so we have um, exited a critical period, sanitary period with the COVID crisis, and then we have entered in this uh, conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And you can see the impact on the price of the raw material and specifically the wheat situation. So during the COVID situation, we moved from a market which was around 190, 200 euro up to 250 euro. And by then, when the, this conflict has, um, came up, we moved suddenly to up to 400, even 450 euro. Now the market is, I would say, landing. But uh, where is it expected to, to land finally? So we can see the trend. And this trend is still, uh, the downtrend is still under pressure because um, the first step was the implementation of the corridor in the Black Sea area to, to make uh, the export of um, the Ukraine wheat possible. But this corridor has been uh, shut down recently in July, so it has created some tension. But we know that the Ukrainian um, uh, people, they have organized the export of the wheat through new lane and uh, to escape this uh, corridor situation. And now, as you can see on the left side graph, what was representing 52% of the export uh, with the corridor now is nothing. And it has been mostly replaced by the Danube port. So it's uh, very important to consider this situation, meaning that Ukraine is still at export. It's still available for exporting the wheat. But this export, is more complicated because uh, they have to move the goods to the port from uh, on the Danube River, and it is creating some more headache in terms of uh, uh, supply chain, uh, transport, and of course, cost. So looking at the world context in terms of cereals, we have to, to see that uh, the, the crop volume are following the, the demand, or the demand is following the crop. So, so far, so good, I would say. We can uh, look at the global figure because uh, the, we are reaching more or less 2 billion, 300 million tons of uh, 
cereals in terms of production and consumption in the world, including corn, wheat, rice, and so on. So as long as the, 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 the consumption is uh, following the crop and the crop is following the consumption, I would say no problem. But it is not uh, the reality when we look at the, the availability of the, the cereals for export because this volume in terms of availability of wheat or corn, for instance, is slightly decreasing. So it is putting the world market under pressure. Just to say that um, this volume, which is amounting about 140 million tons, which is in red, uh, green color, sorry, this volume available for export, this is a carryover, I would say. So this, uh, this means that the volume available at the end of June 24, for instance, for export. So that means if we face a problem with the crop production during next year due to um, any climate event, weather event, we have to compensate the lack of production by this available quantity of cereals. And 140 million available to compensate a, some kind of uh, problem with the weather is not so much. So this is something that we need to look after in terms of uh, market volatility. And it is even uh, worse with the wheat situation because this year we are having a, a production which is below the need for consumption. So the level of available stock carryover for export is uh, decreasing significantly so the wheat situation is uh, at stake because and we need to to look after that because uh, so far no, no problem to export or to sell the wheat because we are at the end of the crop but during springtime it, it may change and even before let's see what uh, what are the key drivers so this mapping of the different uh, wheat crop over the world is giving you the trend in terms of availability so we can say that on the North American continent, they are resuming with some normal crop. In South, uh, Southern uh, American continent, it's different because Argentina, which is a big player, has lost 7 million tons versus last year, which is a lot of volume. And um, when we look at the European situation, everywhere we are producing less, but it's not so much less than last year. So overall, it's a little bit less than last year, but I would say it's a more or less average situation over the last uh, few years. When we look at Russia, even though they have lost 10 million tons versus last year, they are still ranking at a very high level of production, 84 million tons, which is a very high level once again. So what is uh, important to look at is the situation in India, for instance, because they have lost 30 million tons of wheat. That means they are, they are not anymore in the situ export situation. And they have this problem as well with the, the rice, which is very critical situation. Just for your information, the Myanmar country has banned any export of rice. So it is obviously impacting, impacting on the situation of the worldwide uh, cereal availability. And Austria is under pressure, especially at that time. So we have to be very careful with all these, uh, these trends, at least for the wheat. If we would have the mapping for the corn, it is different because it is all in green so far. But for the wheat, uh, it is more tricky. So these are some data, concrete data for your record, for instance, where you can see where we grow in terms of uh, consumption and where we grow in terms of export, etc. So generally speaking, we are losing 17 million tons in terms of uh, uh, crop. So the global consumption is raising. So the demand is uh, plus 1% and uh, we have a declining final stock. So the, when we look at the situation of the different countries, importing countries, we can see that uh, Turkey is uh, expecting to um, to less import, but uh, we can see as well that the export country, we have a big problem with Ukraine, of course, with Australia and the uh, States. So it's important to, to be careful with that because um, States, Ukraine, EU, Russia, 
they are the main exporter of uh, wheat. Russia is still uh, very dominant, uh, dominating the market. Another topic which, which is uh, to be considered very carefully is the weather market and this matter of El Nino, La Nina. So we are exiting uh, La Nina, uh, I would say, uh, weather situation to move to El Nino. And El Nino is consisting in the warming of the temperature on the surface of the tropical Oriental Pacific Ocean. And uh, while La Nina is leading to a decrease of the water temperature on the surface of the ocean, the consequence is different. So we have the, 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 the trade winds are disappearing when El Nino is occurring. And we have as well a, a warming of the, globe, um, the temperature on the planet. And uh, in this area, in the ocean area, we can see plus 05 per, uh, degrees Celsius of uh, temperature increase of the surface of the, the sea. So that is expected to start by end of 2023. And I would say it has already started because if, we, if you look at uh, to the, the, the broadcast, for instance, you can see that they talk about very high temperature in Argentina at the moment. So uh, what are the consequences? This situation is generating high pressure along the ocean coast. We can expect new peak of temperature on the worldwide level. It's not everywhere the case, we will see later. And it is mostly impacting the south hemisphere crops. But it can be drought and it can be as well flooding. So these are, this is a mapping of the different uh, consequences in terms of a dry or wet situation according to the, uh, this El Nino implementation. So South America is uh, at concern because uh, Brazil is a very important producer of corn and soybean, as you know. In North America, we have to be careful because it seems that uh, the corn belt could be affected by the dry, dry situation, as well Canada, where the, we, we farm the, the wheat, and in the Montana, for instance, in the States. And uh, in South Africa as well, there is uh, some possible issue with, uh, with the crop. And we, what is, be, is expected to be very critical is in India and in the Southeast Asia, including Australia. So when the rest of the world should be more, uh, I would say, facing problem of uh, flooding than uh, dryness. This is just for your record, uh, the situation in, in Europe. So we have observed some dry situation in North Europe and uh, in mainly as well in Spain during springtime. So we, uh, we were facing high uh, flooding or high uh, rain in Italy and uh, southeast of uh, Europe and concerning the, 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 the winter crop impact. So we could say that um, it is mostly in the north of um, Europe that way where we had some flooding, which has created some um, disease on the, the wheat and some damage on the quality of the wheat. And of course, Spain has suffered a shortage of uh, production for the wheat and not only the wheat, of course. So when we look at the figure for the market in Europe, so as you can see that the, the crop, the wheat crop is expected at the same level as last year, 150 million tons roughly. And the consumption is expected to grow by 2 million tons. So at the end, the final stock is expected to decrease by uh, three more or less 2.5 million tons, 3 million tons. So the situation is not bad but uh, we have to be to be careful with the ending stock what we can see uh, in terms of business we have an increase of domestic use for the common wheat for the standard wheat but this is mostly animal feeding which is leading the trend because uh, we have more uh, discarded uh, wheat quality because of the high rain uh, heavy rain in North Europe during the crop time. And we had to discard a lot of quantity of wheat uh, that, uh, and it has been directed to animal feeding. So uh, the human consumption is slightly increasing as well. So concerning the export, uh, we are contemplating maybe a, a reduction of export under the pressure of the competition, especially Russia, 
because we Europe and especially French uh, country, French country is are losing some important market like uh, Egypt to the benefit of uh, the Russian uh, producer. So let's see what is happening in the next uh, few months concerning this export situation. Concerning the situation in France, in France, the crop is not so bad, but not so good. We are uh, reaching, uh, I would say, average level, which is uh, at uh, 35 million tons, approx. It's plus 4% versus last year, but it is ranking at a normal crop, I would say. The quality, we will see that with Lucy later on. And um, concerning the export, we expect to export a little bit more than last year. But once again, it is not confirmed so that because it will be very much depending on the Russian position. So we expect uh, uh, an increase of the carryover stock by almost 3 million tons. So that means we have enough wheat in Europe, but be careful. That does not mean we have enough wheat for the uh, bread making because a lot of wheat has been discarded in North Europe. So it will be very much depending on the, the, the area where you source uh, the wheat. Concerning the price, so according to the last figures we can get from Euronext, uh, the, the price of the wheat is uh, more or less landing around 240, 250 euro. This is December term, so it is very much reflecting the crop 23. So what can we say for that? It's very difficult to predict anything in terms of um, up and downstream for the price. It seems that we have reached, um, I would say, um, some um, ground and uh, some, um, um, yes, uh, I would say the lower level. It is stabilizing around 240. That does not mean it could move plus or minus 10 euro, but at least we can see that the market is stabilizing around 240 to 50 euro. So for me, there are more, uh, I would say, uh, be, uh, bullish uh, I, um, criteria than bearish one to see the, the, the future of the wheat. So in some situation, we can have as well some cash premium to get the right quality wheat. It will be depending the availability of the wheat on the lo local way. For instance, in, in Germany, north of France, it's not easy to get some uh, uh, suitable wheat for the, the bread making. So in this case, we need to pay some uh, cash premium to get the physical wheat. We have to know, you have to know as well that it's difficult to get the, the uh, the high protein wheat to make the right quality wheat flour because this quality of wheat, uh, the, the acreage has decreased uh, since last, um, since uh, three or four years because um, especially due to the high cost of the, the fertilizer and uh, when we, we farm the, the high protein wheat, we need a lot of uh, <coughs> ammonium so it is necessary to, to spend a lot of money to get that. And the farmer, they have preferred to, 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 to produce some uh, less expensive crop. So that is explaining the less availability of the high protein wheat at the moment. And we have to pay a lot of uh, uh, quality premium to get this uh, quality wheat. It is amounting uh, around 100, 110 euro per metric tons of wheat, high protein wheat when it compared to, I would say, 50 euro last few years. So to summarize the key market parameters, so you have to, to consider the major criteria like the ratio stock over the consumption, the exchange rate between euro and dollar, but not only. The ruble, for instance, is playing a great uh, party, uh, a great game at the moment because the ruble is very weak. So it is, it is facilitating export from Russia. The wheat and corn acreage, uh, because we have this uh, possibility to use wheat or corn for the animal feeding, and the animal feeding market is the most important user of cereals, whatever it is, wheat or corn. You have the impact as well of the other crop, like rice, and this year rice is at stake because we have a lack of availability in the market and a lot of difficulties to import from uh, Southeast Asia. You have some additional parameters to, to look at, geopolitical, 
geopolitical instability. I would say it is becoming a major criteria at the moment. And uh, the weather market as well. We are familiar with the weather market, but it is more and more uh, difficult to, 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 to consider it and to see how it could impact. And it can be a very fast impact. The COVID crisis is behind us, but we still have some uh, impact, much less, of course, than in the past, but uh, it is still uh, at stake. And the worldwide community market, like oil and mineral, you have to know that uh, for the, the, the oil, for instance, uh, the gasoline, and uh, we can use some ethanol, and a lot of corn or sugar can are used to produce ethanol. The, uh, the North America, the states, they are using more than 30% of the crop for the ethanol production. So when the oil is very expensive, of course, it is encouraging the production of the ethanol from the corn, which, which is the case at the moment. And uh, there are still this, uh, I would say, underestimated data concerning what is happening in China concerning the production, the consumption, and the way they are sourcing. So at the moment, it is strange because um, China, they were familiar to source from uh, US, especially for the corn and uh, the soya. But uh, now they are less showing from uh, at that level. And they are more sourcing from South America, like from Brazil, mostly, with the corn and the soybean. And uh, they are, of course, buying some significant quantity of wheat from Russia. So we could say that um, the, the business be in between the BRICS are more developing than in before. And um, it is not, I would say, um, good for the US and maybe for Europe. So something is happening. And at least it's very difficult to read the, the, the data and to get the, the, the true from what is happening at the moment at that level. But we have to look at that once again. Concerning the, the cost of the wheat flour, what makes the cost of the wheat flour? So we have talked a lot about the, the market price, which is reflecting the, the, the basis of the cost of the wheat flour. Euronext, for instance, for Europe, or uh, the Chicago Board Exchange for the, the CBO, for uh, CBOT for the US. These are driving the, the international trade. But when we look at the local use of the wheat, wherever it is in Europe or uh, in the rest of the world, we have to, to look at the quality of the wheat. We need to make the wheat flour. It can be a standard wheat. It can be a recommended wheat by some organization, like in France, for instance, we have uh, the French Milling Association, which are recommending some some specific uh, wheat variety to make the, the right wheat flour. There are this kind of uh, wheat improver, high protein wheat improver. So I have been talking about that. And this year we pay a lot of uh, quality premium to, to make sure that we can get this uh, quality wheat. And there are various uh, premium to, to remunerate different integrity chain and different uh, certification. So we have many certification in France. Most of the time, the purpose is to meet with the societal expectation. Um, I would say uh, zero, pesti use, uh, zero pesticides or residues, um, low carbon, uh, different criteria like that, which are uh, increasing the cost of the, the, the raw material, because it is more uh, costing to produce under such uh, criteria. So at the end, the, what we have to, to keep in mind is the Euro next reference, the, the cash premium you may have to pay to get the physical wheat, the quality premium, especially for the high protein wheat, for instance, integrity chain premium, storage fees, milling yield, it is depending on the quality of the wheat, of course, and the, the type of uh, wheat flour you need. If you need the T65, it is um, less, it is more a better yield than the, T, the type uh, T45, for instance. So it is impacting at the end the cost of the wheat flour. And because uh, in some cases we, we generate more byproduct and the byproduct, uh, the value of the byproduct is uh, under pressure because the, the animal feeding is less requiring byproduct. They are more 
feed grade product available. And generally speaking, the, the, the number of um, cattle is less than uh, in the past. So we need less uh, volume for the animal feeding overall. <clears throat> so the synthesis for this crop to keep in mind. So concerning the bullish factors, so the, the world wheat stock uh, is, uh, I would say, difficult to, to mobilize. And we, there are some risks in terms of uh, availability in case we face any problem with some climate uh, weather situation. And um, concerning the, the, the situation with Russia, we never know what they want to do. Now it seems that they want to, to, to implement a, a lim, uh, limit price to sell at around maybe 240 to 50 euro. But it seems that they don't want to go below. In any case, they have a very cheap currency, which, which can uh, facilitate export. So we have a lower production forecast for the world cereals complex for the next uh, few months. And we have to be careful with what is happening with uh, El Nino. Export corridors is put on hold. So it is not uh, facilitating export, despite we have seen that there are some alternative lanes. And uh, in Europe, North Europe, we have less food grade quality uh, due to the rain during the, the crop time. Concerning the bearish factors, we still have this very important crop in US for the second year. And uh, Russia are very strong in export. They can deal directly with some countries and making some, uh, I would say, discount. Like he, I heard that they were giving some important discount to Brazil at the moment to export their wheat to Brazil. There are large volume available at short term because we have on an overall level good crop in EU, in Russia, in Ukraine. We have a low demand on the worldwide level due to the recession. Uh, we don't see about uh, what is happening about the Chinese demand. And of course, the inflation has created some economical difficulties in different countries, especially the importer like Egypt, Maghrebian countries, Lebanon, and so on. The ruble is very weak versus dollar and euro. And the euro at the moment is uh, much stronger than last year versus, uh, compared to the dollar because it's around $1.05 dollar when it was last year, $0.95 dollar. So the, the factors to, to watch, the bullish factors, this is um, um, we, we have to, to look at if the traditional importers are still in the market. Very low landing, ending stock level of, of uh, largest export countries. We have seen that before. We have this increase in the wheat consumption to replace the the corn because the wheat, uh, the, at least the feed wheat is less expensive than the, the, the corn. And we need to replace some quantity of rice, which cannot be imported as well. You have the relaxation of the import uh, rules in developing country. If they want to import in the cheaper con con uh, condition, they need to, to get their uh, specification more flexible. They will have less food grade wheat in North Europe compared to the feed grade. And uh, we believe that Chinese uh, could, be at, uh, could be in the market uh, soon and could resume with the import on the significant level because they have faced different problems of flooding, quality wheat, and the demand is still strong. And do not forget that the price now has reached a level which made the consumption, I would say, not cheaper, but at least much, much cheaper than what it was last year. So it can encourage the consumption and the development of the market, of course. Bearish factors, we still have a lack of uh, global economic dynamism due to the inflation. We have this decrease in meat consumption, uh, which is impacting the consumption in, uh, for the animal feeding, for instance. And we have an uh, attractive Russian wheat price due to high volume available. And uh, in any case, we have a high speculative market and we have to be careful with that. We have, we have a, I would say, relatively low level of price at the moment. I don't believe it could go much below, but uh, who knows? This is what I wanted to share with you this morning. Of course, I am at your disposal to answer your question at the end of the, this webinar. 
but I give the floor now to Lucy to introduce you what has happened on the technical level. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much, uh, Claude. So depending on where you are located, good morning or good every good evening to all. I will give you some information on wheat and floor quality in France for the harvest 23. So protein contents at 11.6% on average are satisfa satisfactory, equivalent to 2022 and to the five, year, five years average. They are corresponding to the objectives of French cereal industry. On the graph on the left, you have the distribution of wheat according to their protein level. As for the last five years, the majority of the wheat is between 11.5% and 12%. About the specific weights, they, they vary. Um, they are varying uh, this year, but remain at the levels expected by the market in the ma majority of cases. As you can see on the right graph, graph the national average done slightly compared to 2022. Uh, last year, it was at uh, 78.3 kilograms per hectoliter, and this year it is at uh, 76.4 kilograms per hectoliter. The plot in the northwest in France, whose harvest was postponed due to the heavy and repeated rains, will see their specific weight degraded. Uh, sorting and cleaning operations by the collectors will help improve uh, these criteria. In the situation of Northwest, still in the Northwest, particular attention should be paid to the Hagberg Falling Index, um, even if globally the Hagberg Falling, this Hagberg indices, meet the needs of the milling industry, even if they are done slightly compared to 2022. Last year, 96% uh, of the harvest had a falling time upper than uh, uh, 240 seconds. In 2023, in 2023, it is 91% of the harvest, which is a good rate. Good rate. To conclude on wheat quality, in 2022, 59% uh, of wheat was classified as premium and higher quality. In 23, there will be 60%. So the quality has therefore been relatively stable in recent years. Let's move now on to the quality of flour and the impact in bread making. Uh, the flour used for the test were prepared on a um, Buller mini meal. The wheat comes from different French collection points. This year, we notice a lack of hydration on the dose of 1 to 4 percent, depending on the varieties, uh, giving soft dose but without notable impact on the stickiness. The dose smoothing can cause dough tearing in some areas. And the, the dough elasticity is greater than in 2022, with often tearing during shaping, even on rather extensible varieties, which leads us to say that this year the profile of each variety is not always consistent. There is a decrease in extensibility on uh, all varieties. And uh, we have seen a good dough hold before baking and correct to good volumes on the finished product. Oven springs are correct, even if there are regional disparities, and the dough tolerance is consistent compared to last year. Overall, results are good, although we note that certain varieties like Simoisson and LG Absalon are weak with a lack of tenacity and consistency. The BPMF wheat blends uh, corresponding to low protein blends um, produced in the, in the mills uh, prepared by the millers are generally correct. And there is uh, also a positive effect of uh, industrial greens and arose again in hydration. At Alveograph analysis, the baking strength, the W and the P 
L of the flowers are stable, the W values follow the distribution of the protein levels. The elasticity indexes, uh, called IE, are increasing. Um, this year we have, uh, we, we are at uh, 57.3 on average compared to uh, 54 in uh, 2022, which correlates to the results obtained uh, in bread making. As a reminder to obtain uh, an equilibrated dough, balanced in elasticity, the value of uh, the IE uh, must be um, between 50 and 55. Using the farinograph, we remain at fairly low hydration levels for the level of protein of the wheat, but the stability of the dough is correct. So our recommendation for optimizing the year's flour are the follows. Uh, the, the kneading time to be, must be optimized uh, rather upwards if there is tearing. Uh, you can increase extending agents in uh, your recipe and in the correction of the flour. And uh, there is also an interest in, in wheat with an, ex with an extensible profile. We you can have also an interest in functional flours and enzymes, which could uh, favorize the extensibility of the dough. And finally, to replace your gluten additions, if you use it in recipe or in the flour correction, there is still an interest in our blue safe solutions. Thank you very much, Lucille and Claude, for all this detailed information. So now we will start um, the Q&A uh, session. So just a reminder, do not hesitate to ask your questions here and we'll uh, try to answer all of them. So first question, uh, I think Lucille, this question is for you. So why do you suggest extensors to adjust the flower? Uh, as I said during my presentation uh, this year, um, the, the dough is uh, very elastic. Um, and for some uh, application in some recipe, for example, to do a long baguette or uh, to, to do croissant, we need, we need more an extensible dough. So that is the reason why I, um, I suggest uh, to put uh, extensing agent uh, in a floor correction or in your recipe. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to the second question. Claude, this question is for you. So how do you explain the market premium? So the market premium, let's, we talk about um, additional cost or cost reduction we may have on the market price. It is depending where you source the raw material and the availability of this material locally. So for instance, when we talk about this problem of uh, discarded wheat in North Europe, so that means it is uh, meaning less availability for the food grade wheat compared to what we need. So in this case, it may happen that to get this food grade quality wheat, we need to give a little bit more money than the market is expecting to get this uh, wheat. So it can be five, five euros, for instance, even more in some situation. This year, the market, since we have this problem of uh, quality wheat, which has been discarded due to the heavy rain during the crop time, generally speaking, we are facing some uh, cash premium for to get the physical uh, wheat. It's nothing to see with the quality premium we may have for the high protein wheat. Uh, as I was telling to you that it is reaching more or less uh, 110 euro per metric ton when usually it was around 50 euro, but we talk about quality premium, not market premium. Okay, thank you very much, Claude, for this, uh, all these details. So we do have a um, couple of other questions. Uh, these ones are for you, uh, Lucille. So I'll start with the first one. Could you explain us what is Glucef? So Glucef is a solution, an ingredient that we have developed in our, in our lab. And uh, Glucef is a solution uh, which helps to reduce uh, the added gluten in um, flour 
on the correction, but also to substitute added gluten in uh, the recipe of industrial. So Glucef is a ranch and we have uh, different, uh, different ingredients and um, if you need more information, uh, you can uh, ask more and uh, to the marketing team and they will uh, revert to me. Thank you very much. Uh, following on that, uh, another technical question, text question. Could you explain, could you tell us what could be an exten extensing agent for flour? So the, there are different extensing agents uh, in, um, that we can use in, uh, in bakery and in flour. Uh, so we can use the activity yeast. Uh, we can use also some enzyme which could give some xylanase or hemicellulase uh, which could help to, to give extensibility to the dough. And uh, we, we have also in our range a functional flower called Innocence with Germ. Uh, which will help you to improve uh, the extensibility of, uh, of your dose. Uh, it could be used in, uh, for example, in a soft tortilla dough, in wrap dough, uh, to have the right uh, diameter of, uh, of the soft tortilla. Okay, thank you very much. Um, going back on Glucef, we have another question. Could you let us know, uh, Lucille, if uh, Glucef is a clean label solution? Yeah, it is a clean label solution because it is a blend of functional flour and enzyme. So uh, it is the enzyme are not declared in the finished product, and the functional flour used is uh, could be declared uh, with flour. So it is clean. Yes. Thank you very much. We have reached the end of our webinar. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to our speakers and thank you uh, to everyone for attending. We will send you, as explained at the beginning, the replay and the presentation of our webinar. Thank you very much and have a great day.